so much, Abe Louise. It's always a pleasure to hear you read and yeah. for that introduction. It's, it's very true. <laughs> um, last but not least, we have E. Kristen Anderson. She is a poet and author living in Austin, Texas. She's the edit co-editor of Dear Teen Me, an anthology based on the popular website. And her next anthology, Hysteria, Writing the Female Body, is forthcoming from Sable Books. She is currently curating Come As You Are, an anthology of writing on 90s pop culture for ELJ publications. Kristen is the author of eight chapbooks of poetry, including A Guide for the Practical Object Tea, Pray, 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 Poems I Wrote to Prince in the Middle of the Night, Fire in the Sky, She Witnesses, and We're Doing Witchcraft, which we're all here for today. Uh, but Kristen recently took a position as Special Products Manager for ELJ and is a poetry editor at Found Poetry Review. Once upon a time, she worked at The New Yorker. Emily. Well, thank y'all for being here. Um, I know that there's football season and uh, family season and it's getting nice outside and maybe we want to like not be sitting indoors somewhere and so it's really nice that everyone is able to come out tonight. Um, and I especially want to thank Katie Lovegren and Louise Young for reading before me because it's always more fun to celebrate with friends. Um, the first poem I want to read is called At That Age When We Girls Become Fairies. Fifteen is before the wings come. No, that's wrong. At fifteen we've begun to feel the nubs of bone pushing at the muscle, the skin of our backs. These bones aren't right. We itch until the skin burns red. Beg our mothers for a solve, anything to make it how it was. Fifteen is feet wishing for grass. Wearing shoes that bind our long toes. Fifteen is how our eyes seem darker in harsher lights. How we squint and feel the prick of tears and duck into our lockers and hide with our books. This is before anyone tells us anything. Identities are secret and gym class is finished with Bath and Body Works, Country Apple. It's not so much a signature scent as it is a place we remember being safe a place it's possible to be safe again, if it turns out to be real. When the wings come, we cry. We cry for ourselves mostly, but also for the others, crumbled in corners of closets, telling their stories with dresses instead of words. We fall out of our windows into grass and onto sidewalks. We are 15, and we have no time. Ain't that the truth? It's so true. <laughs> I, you couldn't pay me to be 15 again, and there's, uh, <laughs> and I'm really poor. Uh, <laughs> um, so this one is called, uh, it, it, you know, this is where I start to get a little bit, um, what, what's, what's the, I have a, something called aphasia, and so I'm going to do this thing all night, I'm sure, where I go, what's the word for, uh, where, when you say something that makes religious people mad? Sacrilegious. Okay, cool. Mm -mm -mm. At least I'm not doing like the hand gestures yet, because that will happen. Um, because it can be Adam if you believe you can have Eden. If I am an orchard, then you must be Eve. Look at your arms, plucking my branches bare. There's no snake whispering in your ear. I know this, because you've never listened to low voices. But look at these arms of yours, so full of fruit. The walls of your elbows, collecting the sweet juice. If I am a snake, then you should know that under duress, I will consume myself, tell first into my own mouth. I suppose you'd lift me from the dirt, now an Ouroboros. My heart, that I would still be at fault in your noose. I suppose I ate myself into my kidneys, my lungs. If you are Eve, then I am shame. I am shoulders and hips and mascara and dress code violations. <laughs> if you are Eve, then I give you sin. It was always yours, your ribs falling to dust as I prove how you are myth. So that one makes people a little angry sometimes, but I'm here to scandalize the masses, or at least the folks in this room, and then we'll get to the masses at some point. This is We're Doing Witchcraft, and this was actually based on an article I read about a girl um, who was leading a uh, a petition to get dress codes changed in her schools because girls are being kicked out of classrooms for having tag tops on. And there are no uh, dress code uh, violations that you can get as a young man other than having swears on your t-shirt. 
um, because there are no, it's just not a thing, um, the way the fashion world works. So if you are a female, it's your fault if the boys are looking at your titties, or if the boys are looking at your legs, it's your fault that they're distracted, and so you will get sent home and be denied education. Um, so it, the only thing I can think of is that shoulders much ha must have some kind of witchcraft in them, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're doing witchcraft. This morning I buried my shoulders and refused a cardigan. The walls I live in are not air conditioned and we spend our days listing sins in our little auditoriums. This dress wasn't so short once and we know why they obsess over our thighs like perhaps we are hunched over in family sized buckets. This morning I bared my shoulders and winked at the maiden, the mother, and the crone. Here lies intent, our blood on our hands. Your walls are hospital green and paper thin. Listen to the books shake, spines tingling with each fleshy midriff revealed in our passing right. Here we line the walls in plastic chairs, on wooden benches, eyes low, listening for signs that we should run wild into fields and the streets where every heart is broken. This morning I bared my shoulders and left the house anyway because we're all running amok, a menace en masse, wild horses intolerant of your whips and spurs. The lightning comes and the, in the building is dark and we are still here whispering oaths whether or not you can see the breath heaving in our chests. <coughs> so I guess we should all just be wearing our short shorts to school. I know some of us are in school, right? I mean, it's not elementary school, but it's a thing that you should do. Uh, recently, most of you know I was hospitalized for quite a long time. And I found myself, after I was released, completely distraught because I'd been in the hospital for, I don't know, for about a month, and suddenly nobody was coming to check my blood pressure in the middle of the night. Um, you know, I would start having a panic attack and I was like, I don't know, am I dying? Am I not dying? Is, you know, there's something I should call my doctor about, but it's three in the morning. And so I've gotten to this Wikipedia hole, trying to find out how much Valium I was allowed to take before I would be in a coma. And it's, you know, maybe not the best way to find out, but it worked for that night. Um, but I did find out a lot of information on rats and Valium, which is how this poem came about. Between 50 and 64 of rats will self-administer diazepam. So I have to imagine a rat on Valium, and how she might lap up that nectar, roll over, breathe, and find a modicum of peace and home. How home is more habit than locale, a ritual with scheduled meals and a nurse calling you honey. I am also belly up, my vein is open, and the rat waits, wails, and I wait, our breaths slow and suck at beige, gloved hands reach out to touch. Look how her eyelids droop, some dream a tremor in her feet. I avoid the mirror, wait for a friend to promise there's color in my cheeks again. No, the IV, always the IV, it burns. Take your hand and push. My sister rat and I have had enough of hunger and shallow headboards. Do you guys know about Selkies? Mm -hmm. Please tell us. Okay, so there, it's a little bit like a mermaid, except not at all. Um, it, not their underwater creatures. So if you're writing a Selkie book, it's the YA market, they're gonna tell you you wrote a mermaid book, but it, you didn't. Um, and they are based on kind of like a seal mythology, so a Selkie uses the seal skin to travel in the water, but on land she takes the seal skin off to entice men and cause terrible damage. Um, and all I can think of is, the, is with the selkie, if, you, if a man captures the, um, the selkie's skin, he owns her. And so to me, it's more about the ownership than it is her being this terrible monster. Um, so that's kind of where I went when I wrote this poem, Selkie. It's not that I'm not comfortable in my own skin, it's that I can't ever be without it. It's a harness and a handbag holding me to the ocean with a hook and a thread. This is the life I wanted, a cottage, no Prince Charming, but a kind heart, a cat, and a home library. In the sea, I can't have any of this, still pink skin for its other self, wet and dark. 
One day I'll go to the beach, set a fire, throw in the bag full of everything I carry around. Driver's license, lip gloss, cash, and the pelts a last tie to the water, to the split, and to the lie that binds. And this, this is a poem that was requested uh, immediately when Abe walked in. <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite one. Okay. Um, do you guys remember that dude, Vito Barbieri, who is, I want to say, a senator somewhere up in like Iowa, and he was like, so um, wouldn't it be easier if women just swallowed cameras to look at their vaginas? <laughs> and <laughs> anybody with a vagina was like, are you even serious? <clears throat> and he has since kind of like backtracked and said like, well, I wasn't really saying that, but I was trying to compare it to how easy it is to do men's exams, and I'm just kind of like, <laughs> so anyway, this is called The Final Frontier, after Vito Barbieri. I let my vagina swallow a camera. I've been told we're broadcasting into space because the truth is out there. Here I sit shifting on crackling paper, delivering history. We have the footage, you wouldn't believe what we can see. At NASA, they've proclaimed intelligent life could prosper here, inside me. Imagine, this is how we might discover all the bizarre contradictions that make me woman. I let my vagina switch off the camera. I cannot be a one-woman SETI. Here is not wow. Here is not the life we had hoped for. Here, I'll draw you a map. Do you guys know about the wow signal? John, you must know about the wow signal. Okay, I'm disappointed in you. The, the wow signal, it was they, they created this project to send all kinds of stuff out into space. In, I want to say the 70s or 80s. Um, and the whole idea is they sent all these different like music and messages from children. And we never got anything back. But eventually the data came back that looked different from like the repetitive data we were getting. And uh, the guy watching it that night wrote wow next to it. And anyway, it's called the wow signal. Um, the last poem I'm going to read is called Whatever the Fuck I Want. And this is a found poem created using an interview with Sarah Silverman. Whatever the fuck I want. For the majority of my life, I put on a fancy dress like an inherent problem. With authority. I'm still me. I need to be ugly. In love with instinct, a certain wall. I find a law and order marathon in my purse in awe of everywhere. I was so many layers, I barely fit in pants. They don't love me, I wouldn't mind a free pass. Sweet, protective. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you.